Hello and welcome to the second installment of Option Overlay Strategies. My name is Benoit Parike and I'm Lead Portfolio Manager and President here at Exponent Investment Management. Now many of you have been investing in equities for quite some time, for quite some time probably, and you've probably been investing also um, and or, if you will, in mutual funds uh, and or exchange traded funds. However, many of you I would bet probably have never heard or at the very least have not um, don't have a great understanding of how to incorporate options into your strategy. Um, options I would say were definitely misunderstood and I would even dare say that they're often abused in terms of their intended uses. Now after watching this short video, the short video series, we hope that you'll understand a little bit better about what uh, how option strategies can be, how can they benefit you? Now, the strategies that we use here at Exponent are really aimed at increasing income. Now, in this in the current low interest rate environment, increasing income is always a good thing. The best of all, the way we increase the income is by selling uh, or uh, options, and the sale is considered a capital gains. And in Canada, capital gains are traded very favorably by the tax authorities, uh, which is another added bonus. So let's recap a little bit of what we covered in the first video, which is the definition of a call option, uh, which is an equity option. Call option is the right, but not the obligation, to purchase an underlying stock at a particular price, known as the stock price, by a particular date, known as the expiration date, or cheaply referred to as the best before date. Now there can be a buyer of a call option and a seller of a call option. Now, what I want to talk to you about in the second video is really the, the concept of volatility and time in terms of how they have an impact on the pricing of an option. Now clearly the underlying stock price, the example that we used in the first video was GE, so the stock price has a tremendous effect on the price of the option. But volatility and time really are uh, the other two parameters that uh, have tremendous impact and need to be understood and usually misunderstood by um, many. So let's start with volatility. Now, I, I'm not going to uh, teach you a statistics class, but the idea is to change, so change the word volatility and replace it with probability. So on the left, we have Baytex Energy, which is an energy stock and currently energy stocks are certainly unloved thanks to uh, the lower oil prices. So we've got here on the left uh, Baytex Energy and you can see that the up and down if you will that's what we refer to as pro a volatility is much higher than a low volatility stock which is on the right which would be say Scotiabank, Canadian bank stock. So the red line refers to the strike price. So in this case we have 18 and a half for Baytex and it looks like it's 64 and a half for Scotiabank. Now the owner of the call option has a higher probability with a higher volatility stock to see his or her call purchase uh, be profitable versus a low volatility stock where the stock just kind of meanders but there's not a lot of up and down to it. So that's what we mean by volatility and probability. So when there's a higher volatility to a stock there's a higher likelihood that the call owner will see his or her trade be profitable and so he or she are more likely to pay up or pay more for this call option versus a low volatility stock which really doesn't have a lot of up and down and thus less probability of having a call purchaser be exercised. The next concept and this is really an important concept is the concept of time and so the call owner is fighting this expiration. So let me just use my favorite laser pointer here. And we've got here an, a, an example of an 85 day to maturity. So the every day that the all else being equal that the stock option sort of uh, lives, if you will, it dies a little bit or its price falls a little bit. And it's sometimes it's a linear fashion like this. Sometimes it might be a little flatter sort of shape to it. But what is true is that around 40 to 30 days, the start, the selling, if you will, of the value of the option really starts what we say falling off the table or really accelerates. And so 
it's important to understand that the call owner is fighting time and the call seller in this case has time working for him or for her and so if we go back the volatility works for the call buyer and uh, because his him or her have a better chance of uh, seeing profits on the call buy but is also fighting time and so that's the two important concepts to understand is that volatility and time will have an impact so the longer the date of the option the more expensive it will be because the higher likelihood or the higher probability it has of being profitable obviously with five or ten days or even 20 days left to expiration you know a lot has to go right for the call buyer to be profitable especially if they're out of the money or or slightly uh, closer to the money if you will um, so let's look at recap our selling calls idea here so if you're selling calls in a previous example we're selling a $26 GE strike price and we were collecting 20 32 cents for it and the stock price was trading for 24.75 so really the time here the seller of the option is converting time because they're selling the option so they're selling time and they're also collecting volatility so they're selling the volatility and getting paid in this case 32 cents so it does reduce your cost price a little bit but the trade the offset is to limit the upside so cover calls so time is the essence. So really, as we said earlier, we're converting time into cash. We're also converting probability into cash. And sometimes if, if you do more research on your own and web, you'll make read a uh, gee whiz, you know, uh, selling calls or selling puts are really a, a, a no-lose proposition because 70% of the time, sometimes I've, I've seen as high as 90% of the time, options expire worthless. Well, don't really buy into that one because first of all, there are lots of options out there that don't have a snowball's chance in hell of ever being profitable. So this is a great example where statistics really kind of come in and skew the real the real story, the reality. What I will say, and we're ready to say, is that most of the time, the option seller in, the, in our strategy that we take, we try to keep the dividend because obviously all, most all of the stocks that we buy are in the dividend. You keep the option premium. And you keep the stock. I mean, that's an ideal scenario is that you're always selecting the right option or the right strike price and the right time value where you get to keep your option income, but you're not necessarily called away. Now, it doesn't happen all the time. I mean, a lot of times, sometimes um, you can lose these big runs. So a great example lately has been Visa. Now, Visa was kind of doing nothing and all of a sudden the results came out and boom, the stock shot up. Clearly, if you were short calls and you promised to deliver Visa at a set price, you lost on that run. And that's just the way the cookie crumbles. You have to be willing to live with those risks. I mean, the risk of selling a stock 5% higher within 30 or 45 days is, a, you know, is a, you know, if you want to make 5% in a month, that's a pretty good deal. So that's a risk that you're willing, uh, that we are willing to take. Now, the second one, Ultimately, you still own stocks, even under a covered call scenario, so you still have the risk of owning stocks. That's why we do it with quality stocks, because we still want to own good stocks. Now, some people out there are doing uh, options strategies uh, in, on the debit side, so selling calls and even selling puts, but they're doing it with stocks that I would say are you know, nebulous. They might not be the stocks that you actually want to own and retire with. Um, but they're doing it because of the, the, the stocks have higher volatility and um, and and so they can, can collect a better and higher premium. But the math of the covered call is always the same. You get your profit is determined by your option premium, the dividend that you may or may not receive depending on if the, your stock pays a dividend, and the change in stock value. That's the trade. That's the return of a covered call. So the obvious question is, does it work? Well, I'm sorry to say that, but it depends. Uh, depending on the type of market that we're in. So here we have five year, two five year periods. The first one is, uh, see, oh, the orange line is the spiders of the S&P 500. And the BXM is the cover call index of the S&P 500 slash spiders. So the orange line 
is what we'll refer to as the long only, and then the blue line is referred to as the covered call one. And so since coming out of the 0809 crisis, 2010 to 2014, have been very kind to the, the farm period has been very kind to uh, the spiders, especially since the August period, if you will, of 2011. The market really has gone up without any significant pullback. Um, so clearly in this timeline, call options will do uh, worse than a long only strategy. But if you look at it 05 to 09, when you had lots of volatility, you really can see that the added value of the BXM is pretty significant. So why? Well, we're selling, remember, we're selling volatility. So in, when times are very volatile, you're collecting a much higher income or premium from selling the calls. So it only makes sense that um, you're making more money than long only. The other thing that additional income will do is that you, you're you um, getting some money, so it's cushioning you to blow, if you will, in the pullback. So I'm just eyeballing it here, but you can say that it's roughly 50% of the downside um, of a long only strategy. So does it work? Yes, it does. But if you're in a, in a, in a market that goes up in a straight line, you're better off with a long only. If you're in a flat or in a market that have, doesn't have a lot of direction, but you basically need volatility, that's really the essence uh, of the idea here because you're selling volatility. Over a 10 year, I, I like this chart a lot. It's sort of, you can again see it better. The, what I want to show you from this chart is, is you know, it's kind of neck and neck. So do, do you generate value from a long only ver versus a covered call? I would say that you do, especially if you factor in that you're getting income right away. This income is taxed favorably. Um, it does sort of cushion the blow because you're getting more income in um, lumpy times or bumpy times, if you will, because you're selling this volatility. But also, ultimately, what it, those two concepts allow you to do is that you don't fall down as much, so you don't have to go up as much to come back or skate your back itself back on side. We can see here from sort of the beginning of the crisis, it took about, I'm about balling here, but basically, let's say two years or 18 months to come back to break even, whereas the long only, it took, you know, almost four. So does it reduce volatility? Absolutely. And conceptually, it only makes sense because you're selling volatility. So the higher the volatility, the more income you're getting. And volatile times are always associated with uh, markets that are softing or selling off. So while not, it's not a perfect hedge by any stretch of the imagination because you still are long stocks, it does mitigate um, the downside of the volatile times. So in our case, we will use covered calls either in a carve out strategy, so you might have a larger portfolio, a million, two million, three million dollars, and you want to carve out say 30% or 40% of it, and you want to convert the income. We also use covered call strategies for clients that need income. So they, they might be retired or they might uh, just want to necessarily, they like this, the feeling of seeing the income coming in every month. And from a tax point of view, it's very efficient. So this concludes our second video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you like what you saw and heard, feel free to give me a call or email. My phone number is 613-747-2458, extension 40. Or you can send me an email at benoitexponent.com. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for the third video.